Dun, 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 dun. I don't have my theme song going, so you're just going to have to listen to me say it. But hey, everybody, welcome to Film Trooper Presents Film Marketing Fridays. Um, this is actually a redo. <laughs> I'm here with filmmaker um, Sergio Toledo, who is down in Brazil. Um, or if you live in Brazil, you're like, no, we're not down in Brazil. I'm here in Brazil. You guys are way up there in Portland or whatever, L.A. <laughs> so say hi to everybody, Toledo. Or Sergio, Mr. S Toledo. Hi, Scott. Hi, everybody. Good. Um, hey, tell us a little bit about your film, um, the, the title of it, and the, just kind of like a, a, a rundown of your documentary that you guys just finished up. Yes, it's a documentary about the Brazilian basketball national team. Um, we started production in 2013. Um, in this production, we... Uh, we try to tell a uh, story, the story of the Brazilian national team that started in, in the 50s. They, they are a good team, the 50s. Uh, and in the 70s, they are good. In the 80s, good but not so good. In the 90s, um, Fall down, yeah. and now we are we are rising from the ashes. We say we what the team is rising from the ashes. So it's a it's a nice screenplay, you know. It's it's up and down, up and down, up and down. So um, the documentary it's two hour two hour documentary. It's a future, and. Um, what can I say? We are distributing on demand. We have a, a website that we are distributing on demand, and we released it uh, last year in October. And um, I think that's it. If you have any questions? Uh, that's the website. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so how do you how do you pronounce it again? Bolo o sesto. Yes, that's it. Bola al sesto. Bola that means ball to basket or basketball in English. Right, and then it's a history of a rescue, or how is how is it translated? Are they, how do you translate the last part? History of a rescue. Yes, that's it. That's it. Okay, yeah. So I'll make sure to put links. So everybody could check it out. It's on a VHX uh, TV, and mm -hmm. um, the cool thing about it was, you know, I didn't know. You know, I, I kind of loosely follow basketball. Here in the states, you know, um, during the '80s when I was growing up, definitely I was following, you know, Michael Jordan and you know his uh, dominance. But because of your documentary, I had totally failed to realize that. I mean, you know, they glossed over. But during the '80s, the Brazilian national team beat the United States. Was it in the Olympics or the World Cup or the? I mean, sorry, the World um, Games. It was in the Pan American Games. Pan American, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and. It, and it was kind of a big deal because there was there was professionals on the uh, American basketball team, and it was like it was a wake up call because Brazil beat the Americans in the Pan American Games. Um, it forced the creation of the Dream Team. You know, it was one of those things like whoa, whoa, whoa. America's like we we ain't gonna lose again. So it was really interesting to to see th that not only was it a major triumph for the Brazilian international team, the national team, but also you describe in the in the the documentary about how what, m much of an impact it was for world basketball, like how much it changed the landscape and the competitive pedigree for the the world uh, world stage it was really really interesting, and um, and you definitely have a very cool sort of call to action saying like we need to um, build up the youth program to be the sort of the, almost like the equivalent of the um, you know the Brazilian uh, football team or so soccer team if you know so. Can you tell us a little bit more? Because you kind of mentioned before, for those who don't know, we, you and I have already had this conversation. I just sort of screwed up on the audio, so I asked you if we could do the redo. And so this is our redo version of it. But um, you had mentioned that your project, you were able to get a certain, an, an interesting funding or grant from the state or whatnot. And uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure, sure. Uh, here in Brazil, we have a lot that allow that big companies um, give to producers or not uh, producers like me, uh, film producers or filmmakers or to exhibitions or to photographers or any cultural project that big companies 
give to these people uh, some money that how can I say they transfer transfer and I'm not sure this is the correct word in English but the taxes the they can give to these people these kind of people these projects cultural projects so we receive money from Nike from from Portland to make <laughs> this money. yes yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they received this money to two thousand hundred to two hundred thousand dollars to do this this movie. So um, it was this, and it was one year in production. Twenty five interviews, three countries: United States, Brazil, and Spain. Uh, I don't don't know how cities. I have fifteen cities we visit, and. Um, and that's it. Interesting. Yeah, it's uh, able to get the grant of the money or the you know, and then knowing that it has to have some cultural impact. And uh, not only did it you know give the documentation or the history of the national basketball team, but definitely it was interesting to see like the push or the encouragement for cultural development. So congratulations, it was really good. I you know I was enthralled, and you had a, a, a huge array of cast of characters that from you know. Anybody who's played since the 1950s on, so you had a, a good array of uh, contacts with the um, current and former, um, you know, national team. Sure, thank you, thank you, Scott. So, it's interesting. So during the beginning of the year, I had asked um, those on the Film Trooper uh, um, email list um, if there's one thing you wanted to know more about this year, what would it be? And you had responded a very simple question, which was great, which was, "How do I get my targeted audience?" to buy my film. And so that's what's today's episode of Film Marketing Friday. We're going to actually just try to answer that question or, or delve in to see what actionable items we can um, help out with yourself as well as anybody else that kind of stumbles upon this uh, hangout session slash video. So I'm going to switch over to the slide show and present this to everyone. Cool. So here we are with your question, which is, how do I get my targeted audience to buy my film? Well, it's interesting enough, the whole point of somebody to buy your film is like you're just trying to make the sale. So there's there happens to be five basic obstacles of the sale. There's number one, the customer has no need for it. Number two, there's no money. They don't have any money for your product. Number three, there's no hurry for them to get your product. And number four, there's no desire for them to buy your product. And number five, there's no trust to buy the product. And this actually comes from Zig Ziglar, a uh, famous American salesman and um, motivational speaker. Every sale has five basic obstacles, no need, no money, no hurry, no desire, no trust. So we can address each one individually. So if we look at the first obstacle, if your customer if you're trying to get your customer to buy your film, then let's address the first obstacle, which is there's no need. They don't have any need for your film. So how do you help them overcome that? Well, <clears throat> so that's a big question you have to ask yourself. Well, why does my target audience even need my film? Is your film tied to a charity cause? That could be a need making your charity in need of help. Then you're sort of changing the marketing message a little bit, but you're targeting this obstacle that your buyer might have. And really, honestly, why does anyone ever need anything? So, like, for instance, do kids really need the latest fashions, you know? No, what they need is the association of being cool so how can we make your film or anyone's film cool to overcome this obstacle of no need? So let's look at the next one, no money. Is your process of selling your film easy to use for the customer? Just meaning that you've already chosen a great platform with VHX TV. They make the payment process, the transaction process very easy for customers. You know, if you're trying to do it on your own where there's like a five, seven step process before anybody can actually buy or look at your film because there's so many steps to get the, um, you know, having to sign up and then you got to put your credit card information, you know, all this type of stuff could hinder the, uh, the, the enjoyment process of wanting to just buy your film. So you might want to make sure that the process of selling your film is easy to use, which is great because you're using VHX 
uh, platform. Or is it a pain in the butt? That's what I'm saying. Like, is the payment process just a pain, pain in the ass? Now, if your customer has objections to the price, then how can you compare it to something else that they would spend the money on? And honestly, a $4 film rental is the equivalent to like a $4 coffee latte or a $4 latte. So you can illustrate the benefits that your film has that is worth more than a $4 latte. You know, so you have to just rephrase it and uh, represent, reposition it to your, your potential buyer so that it helps them overcome the obstacle of no money. Um, they don't have any hurry. So why would a customer need to buy your film if there's no hurry? How can you add a sense of scarcity to your sales message? Maybe have a limited release at a discounted price, you know? So it's like, for this weekend only, you're going to get... Uh, the film for X amount of dollars or like for $1, but only for this week only or this weekend only, or that's how you promote it. So that gives us sort of a sense of a scarcity of like, oh, well, you know, I would kind of eyeball on that film. I might as well just get it right now. You know, I got, you know, but if it's $1 all the time, but they know that they could buy it for $1 or rent it for $1, they, they don't have any urgency to like do something about it. So if you have to present that urgency for them, and you, if anybody's familiar with like infomercials or anything like that, the old gimmick is you play up the phrase "for a limited time only." You know, you can get this for a limited time only. Um, so that's the whole point. How do you make your customers hurry? Now let's look at the no desire obstacle. So how can you make your film desirable? Now, if you make your film desirable, it actually will help eliminate the obstacle of no need because. They're in this mindset. The um, you re that's what you, exactly what you want to do. You want to turn the mindset of your customer from someone who has no need for it into somebody like a customer that says, "I want it." So that becomes, "I want" becomes, "I I desire." So the last one is no trust. They want to know, like, well, who are you? Who are you that I should trust to you know buy this film? Um, and does the target audience even know who you are? And most importantly, do they even trust you? And if they don't trust you, then who can you partner up with who they do trust? And I'll go back to that real quick. So it's interesting because in your film, you have a collection of a lot of uh, national heroes that were on the basketball team. You could do maybe find out a way to do like a quick uh, video blurb where they just, you know, you've heard it on radio. Anybody giving like a quick testimonial like, you know, be sure to check out, uh, you know, Basket to the, um, wait, help me, what's the title again? Wait, because I can't pronounce it. In Portuguese? <laughs> yeah, the, your title, your film again? Um, Bola ao Sexto. Okay, so you would say, like, you know, be sure to check out Bola ao Sexto, you know, and support, you know, the national program or whatever it might be. And then you could provide all the links. But then, like, you might do, like, a quick video of... Uh, something like maybe the highlights of that player so it jars the memory of the fan base like oh I remember where, that game and I remember where I was at that game and I remember that guy and then you cut to like what he looks like now and he actually says you know check out this um, uh, documentary and then you give him a call to action so that people can uh, go find it that's really helpful because then you're supplying the trust factor and that's who they would trust so so those are the five obstacles. We can go to the next question, which is, then how do you make the sale? I mean, that's really what this comes down to. Like, now we're being salesmen. Like, you know, okay, well, how do we make that sale? Um, first, you've got to help your customers overcome those obstacles, the five obstacles that we just talked about. So our job, and when we're selling our product, selling our digital product, which happens to be our film, we need to help the target audience overcome all these obstacles. But how do you do that? Actually, let me go back and... But how? No, there you go. <laughs> so it sounds like a little bit more urgency. But how do you do that? Well, I'll show you. <laughs> so what the big thing is we learn copywriting. And this is the art of copywriting because copywriting addresses each obstacle. And good copywriting uses storytelling. And why? Because storytelling connects human emotion to your product. And... People buy with emotion. 
people buy with emotion and not logic. Um, and where do you want to study good copywriting? We'll go to the next phrase. But I just want to talk a little bit more copywriting. The interesting thing about copywriting, it doesn't always have to be just text or in a blog format or like in a small email blast or anything like that. It can be done utilizing visuals, either like a short video or just an Instagram photo. Anything that you're communicating um, very uh, effectively to break down the five sales obstacles and generate an emotional response or connection with your product, that's what will help um, people want to buy your film. And not they have to go all by emotion and not logic, you know. And so in order to study good copywriting, I'm just going to provide two links because there are a lot of places you can go to. But I really enjoy the stuff that they do over at copyblogger.com. And you can actually sign up for free and get like I don't, like a dozen like ebooks that they've created that are all about this topic. And it's I can't believe it's all for free and it's easy to read. They're not like super long books and things like that. And the other one is a really great uh, copying checklist, uh, copywriting checklist from Dane Maxwell, and I'll make sure to provide the links below so everybody can get that. But uh, just start with those two sources. And the whole point is in your art of copywriting, you are helping the customer, the potential customer, overcome those five basic sales obstacles. Um, so yeah, well then what do you do with your copy, right? Well. You get it in front of a targeted audience. Obviously, you've kind of identified it as you know, um, you know, Brazilians that had some affinity or some connection. Maybe you know they run like um, uh, sports camps or basketball camps, or or you know they sell like um, basketball um, themed or basketball equipment and things like that. That that could be a targeted audience to like get them be stoked on it. So you do that's you're trying to get the, uh, your copywriting or your promotion materials to them. Um, and it's obviously it's free with social media. So if you spend time being a good uh, community supporter and member, just engaging, you know, maybe like ten minutes a day, just like seeing what everybody's doing and just asking questions or seeing what they're talking about, and then you can throw in like a comment, like, "Oh, yeah, I remember that um, that play." Or you can even propose a question in the social media s uh, s sphere of saying, like, "Does where were you on, um, you know?" when the Brazilian team beat the Americans. You know, like, that's kind of thing, just get people jarring their memory of, like, oh, yeah, I remember where I was, and then always provide a call to action where they can find your movie. Or what happens is you bring them to, like, a, a one sales page. And that's the interesting thing about VHX is that, um, or even Vimeo, it's, like, the world of online marketing, you can actually utilize these very long versions of a sales page where you know there might be an intro video and then there's all this text below and the text is designed to help eliminate those five obstacles that people have against the sale so by the time they get down through all your long copy on your one single sales page they have no choice but to go oh yeah I'm gonna rent this movie I'm gonna buy this movie right now and we can I'll, we'll look at that in here in a, in a sec but I'll go back to the, uh, the, the screen whoops here we go Okay, so yeah, either you can do free social media or you can do some paid ads or through paid promotional, uh, promoted ad posts, you know. You'll see it sometimes on any site. It'll be a very small little, almost like transparent text that says sponsored, or you know, it's like a sponsored post, you know. But if it's done right, it looks like a normal um, a post in any in social media feed in Facebook or Twitter, but if you look closely, if you want to pay for it, there's like these little sponsored, uh, you know, half o half opaque, um, whatever, transparent little po um, tags to it. So, oh, that's me. We'll go back to this. Okay, so let's let's just have a chat um, more about that as I look up these uh, long form copywriting pages. So yeah, so that's kind of where we're at. We we did have this conversation before, and I didn't. I was curious of like what you thought about, because you know, we it was we talked to like a week ago. So I was interested interested to know, is there anything that uh, other follow up questions that you had or things that you thought about with your own reality, um, being having a full time job and obviously being a part time film like, filmmaker and trying to do the sales and marketing on your own. Um, I was most curious about the realistic. 
barriers that everyone has and then trying to find real world practical things that they can do um, to at least make an, um, a dent in the sales efforts. So I was curious if you, if you had anything to share about since the last time we talked. Yeah, sure. Uh, how you said, uh, filmmaking is not my first job. It's not my full-time job. Um, you know, uh, marketing is the most difficult part for me and for my partner for, because um, that's the question, how we connect with our audience. We have uh, um, a Facebook profile with 90,000 90, followers. We are connecting with them, but we don't. We have. We don't have conversion. Sales yeah. conversion. That's it. We we upload uh, some video clips there, some deleted scenes, and we call to action. We make some questions to them, and we are doing this job, just work on this to marketing or our product, our film. But we are. Um, we don't have a, we don't have conversion sales conversion. Okay, okay. So that's actually you got a great start. If you have ninety thousand, you know, people that looks like it's likes or followers yeah. for the Facebook page. So um, not so much, but you know, it's ninety thousand. A lot of people. Yes, that's fantastic. Actually, so okay, we'll start with that. So you have. You know, I'm definitely not like a Facebook marketing expert, but I, I'm planning on dabbling in more about uh, dealing with promoted posts. And there's some people that I can refer to, you, and I'll make sure to add it to this link here um, that are experts in the Facebook marketing thing. So the way of Facebook now is that if, in order to have any impact, even though you've uh, accumulated 90,000 people um, to be part of your, um, you know, film page or the film fan page, is um, in order to really get further up, you know, conversation with them, you got to pay, unfortunately. Um, but there are ways that to pay for a little bit and then try to get um, um, tactics to get them to be engaged. And one of the easiest things to do is make sure that um, every post that you create looks like an interesting, either it's a short video clip from the movie, like, like I said, and then um, maybe end it with a text, like, you know, you could have... The great play where the team wins, and you know, I, I love in your movie where the guy was saying like, well, "We couldn't even, we couldn't believe that we won the, you know, we beat the Americans. We didn't even know how to celebrate." You know, those are great quotes, and you have little, bi uh, you know, bite-sized uh, elements in your in your film that even if it's through a video that you could do on Facebook that you would actually upload to directly to Facebook and not use a YouTube link, because actually Facebook is uh, favoring. Um, those people, there's actually more engagement if you direct um, directly upload your videos to the Facebook platform because that's when if you scroll through your phone um, you might see like the videos start playing you don't hear the audio. The only way you can get that working is if you upload um, the video to Facebook it's directly as opposed to like you know if you're trying to link to a YouTube video then it shows like a little thumbnail and then you it, it's not as in inviting as somebody scrolling through and they stop and they see an actual video of the basketball play uh, player celebrating whatever, and you can end with the tag like you know, do you where were you when the Brazilian team beat the Americans in eighty five or eighty seven, whatever what year it was, mm -hmm. and then what it is, what it is is then in your post you got to have a call to action, and I'm looking at it, and this is like I said, this is the tough thing about like the landing pages of Vimeo on demand and VHX because. What you need to do is then s take them to a um, a sales page, a landing page. So, so it would be, you know, the the whole page is nothing more than somebody going from Facebook to going, oh, you know, it has to entice them. Like, where were you? Do you remember where you were at? And it goes and you know, or, or some kind of bait to cl make them click. You know, click more to learn about or trying to find out some interesting catchy thing that would make them want to click. Um, I, don't, I can't think of anything off the, off the top of my head. However, we you design that with the copywriting um, techniques in mind so that the idea is when they click out of Facebook, they go to this landing page. And the landing page then 
is like a video, not the trailer of the movie, but almost like a declaration of to of the people that you have in your movie. Like I said, you have to build that trust. So the first thing that you want the customer to see is like an easy to like thirty second, one minute video, so they don't have to read a bunch of text. So the video is just simply there at the the top, and it maybe it uh, shows the the, the game winning play, the celebration of the team, and it cuts to years later that, that just a quick interview of, of a video testimonial from one of the historic players saying like, uh, you know, we didn't know how to celebrate, we didn't know what to do. He goes, but you know this this, but we we're really proud to be part of this documentary and you can check it out, you know, or and and read below. So they read below, and then everything about your text in this one sales page then addresses those five obstacles. Like, you know what, um, you know, kind of st try to keep, uh, using questions are always a good way to keep people reading below. And for salespeople, they always want to get the customer to, like, nodding their head. Like, you know, you know, do you remember where you were or, or hearing stories about when the national team won? You know, what were your feelings like, question mark, you know? It's something because you're trying to you're trying to break down those barriers of like I'm trying to get that emotional connection. So if you can sort of relive those moments of you know uh, where were you? What did you feel like? You know, do you remember like the first week? You know, the the, the outcome. You know, then it says, oh my gosh, do you remember the disappointment when we didn't even make it to the the the, the world games or whatever it might be? Because and all that stuff exists in this you know, and you throw it in there. It all exists in this great documentary. That actually is there to support the the um, the building of the next you know um, basketball foundation or whatever the cause might be, and then you throw in what you want to do is throw in like testimonials like uh, you'll see it sometimes in sales pages where there might be like a, a picture of somebody famous and they, they have one sentence of like you know you know basketball meant everything to me now my daughter is really into it or whatever it is but we need a program to keep it going. So you don't want to. Here's the thing. You, I'm sorry. I bumped this microphone. You don't want to um, have all your testimonials all stacked together because people will just skim through it. So the the way a sales page kind of works is like you 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 got to get the um, the reader to like nod their head and agree, 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 which is why you use a lot of questions, and then you throw in like a testimonial because then all the stuff is subconsciously working to help them overcome the sales obstacles. They're like, I'm emotionally invested. I'm building trust, you know, and if it makes it really easy to keep going down, you can even put like arrows, like graphic arrows. It's weird subconsciously that make people keep going down, so they keep reading the copy, and so by the end of the when they're done, there it is. It's like buy the movie, rent the movie now. All the proceeds or whatever portions of it can help de develop the the foundation or something like that. And uh, thank you for your time, um, and then have an opportunity to like collect their email. Uh, by giving something away, like in, I do it on my site sometimes um, with my free equipment list guide, my free gear guide. Um, I learned this technique from the guys over lead pages. They they always say, "Hey, don't go away empty-handed." Meaning, like if you spend all this time doing all this stuff, like don't go away empty-handed. Here's like um, uh, an infographic or a brochure or or something that it does in alignment with what your message is about your film. Because then you're trying to get that email address. Because they may not buy now, but if you can get them on your email list, that that's where you want to take the 90,000 people that are on Facebook and try to convert at least half of them to an email list. Because at that point, then you can have a more personal relationship and develop a um, a unique uh, engagement, audience engagement on the email list. That you know what they may not buy right away, but if they give you, if they give you, if they give you a <laughs> can't speak. If they give you their email address, then that's sort of a the first sign of a transaction. You know, yes, it's free, but there's an opportunity there to sell them later or give them updates, so they might buy later. So that's really, like I said, that's sort of the drawbacks that I see. And um, like I said, both like Vimeo on demand and um, VHX, like they give you a nice landing page page to to make the sale but you know you sort of need that next you kind of need that middle step which is you need another sale a, a true sales page sort of a long form copywriting sales page that addresses those five obstacles and you have to convert you have to grab the people from Facebook 
And um, that's why when I say use promoted posts is that there's a way that, you know, if you're writing something on your Facebook group, your fan page, you'll see these little things pop up from Facebook, like, would you like to boost your post or would you like to pay for the post? So they're offering you, like, you know, for five bucks, we can get it to your target targeted audience. And there's there's ways to do that so that, you know, you can identify just mainly those people, the 90,000 people that signed up for you. Facebook is saying, like, if you want us to get your post in front of those 90,000 that willingly, freely said they liked your page, you're going to have to pay us, you know. So, but you have to make your, these little posts, they have to make, like, visual, they have to be, like, catchy headlines, and they have to be shareable. So, number one, it's got to have a catchy headline, the visuals have to be engaging enough, it has to have a call to action that brings them to a, a landing page, a sales page, and two, something else that, allow, that makes them want to share it amongst their friends. Like, that's, it's not easy to do, but as, if you can try to answer those questions for yourself, like, hey, does this, would, if I saw this in a, my feed, would I stop and go, you know, stop and at least look at the video? Because if you can get them, you'll see stuff like silly copywriting stuff. It's like, warning, whatever you do, do not watch this video. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just what they call clickbait. You know, it's just like garbage like that. Like, I just, I was just screwing around and I, I was sharing some adorable cat video, like a little kitty cat had jumped, a kitten jumped into a pile of ducklings and they were roughhousing and, and hugging each other, or, or you know. And I said, warning, do not watch this video if you have an aversion to cuteness. You know, I mean, it's just like it's a tongue-in-cheek, but people then will watch it. So things like that are you got to play with. you got to, like, look at how copywriting works. But that's how I can see that you could do it on a part-time, not kill yourself. And if you can create, like, ten really engaging posts and then you just recycle it. Because the whole point is, instead of trying to create a new one every day, you take 10, and then you know one a day, you, re you, know, you start, and you start the cycle over. Because what happens is, you know, I'll see the same post from the same page that I like many times over. It's because they don't know when whoever's on the feed, you know, I, I, I miss so many feeds, you know. Like, there's, there's only so many posts that I can read in, a, like, in 10 minutes at a day. So it's okay to sort of repeat yourself, and you got to test. Like you know what, if you got a really great click-through engagement or conversion rate from this one post that you put together, then you want to double down on it. You want to do more of that. And if you have one that's not doing anything, then you might as well just get rid of it. You know. So that, you know what, this is the sixty-two billion dollar question. The <laughs> seriously, the the marketing industry is worth like sixty-two billion dollars. Like they, they may, there's so much money involved with the information and the marketing world that you know if somebody could, could figure it out like that, it'd be easy. But the reality is, is this is uh, this is the reason why Hollywood spends you know thirty to uh, forty to hundred million dollars per film marketing it. You know, um, and us independents, we have to do it on a very grassroots level. But at least we can utilize the internet marketing tactics and strategies that have been taught to uh, us for the last few years and then it's just me grabbing it from the ether and going oh this is how I think it can be connected to a film product but that's how I see what you got going on right now is definitely like um, you gotta convert what you've already built in Facebook boom and then go um, do a few promoter posts get them to click to a new landing page and the landing page is it's just one page it's like one URL and and then it, and it's just so you can there's no there's nothing else for them to do they can't click anywhere else they just got to go down the line and if you can create arrows you can create testimonials and create this pattern where they go down the slippery slope boom at the end buy the film or get on the email list and if they buy the film they go to they go to the VHX page or whatever it is the plugin you can get from VHX but boom you're you're you know that's how the internet marketers are doing what they do. They, they're just trying to optimize a system, and then they just work on getting leads. Like, they have to build, build the sales funnel, the marketing funnel, and then they just work on doing leads. And right now, everybody's, uh, a lot of them people are having success in Facebook, and, they, and they've kind of come to the conclusion that, okay, I'll, I'll still pay for ads, but it seems to be much more effective than the Google uh, AdSense because when people are searching for Google, they're not... You know, they they're quickly looking for what they want to search organically, and with Facebook, um, 
they're able to target everything that somebody liked. So if anybody who ever liked the basketball or international basketball, so you can branch out of the Brazilian uh, your your list and start targeting these uh, ads towards those people. And like I said, that's that's a whole nother thing that I still have to learn and dabble into. But I definitely know there's some people that do an amazing job teaching Facebook marketing and how to use promoter posts. Um, and I can direct you toward them, and I put it in this link as well. Uh, I know Amy Porterfield and uh, Rick Mulready do a fantastic job at this. So, um, yeah, that's what I would recommend. I don't know if that is helpful, but uh, I remember in your first conversation you said about email email lists. So uh, it's an interesting thing we are not doing. I don't know why we are not doing this, but it's we should we should start work with uh, email lists. Yeah, I mean, so you, I would say that. Take it real basic. Just work on converting the 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 community that you built in Facebook. Just do a strategy, real simple. Like, let's just get them to onto an email list. That's all you want to work on. It maybe not even sell them the film yet. I mean, you can offer them to it. It's not going to hurt. So um, then that way, it's it's tangible. You know, it's not like you have to do like, okay, then you got to do Twitter, and it's like, no, no. If you just focus on your Facebook group, how do you convert them to your email list, and uh, and just go from there? Because um, at least when you're asking those questions, then it's you can find it online, or like I said, I'll give you some um, links afterwards so that you can kind of check out. But uh, that's probably the when I'm looking at it from the outside perspective, that's what I would do. Because I'm like, I look at it, and go, man, you got ninety thousand, that's awesome. Like I would be like. Freaking out if I had nine thousand. Like I barely have enough views for this little stupid film, you know. It's like, <laughs> like uh, I'm always envious and and admiring of people that have like they have a huge like YouTube channel or they've got a huge email list, and like they have all these elements in front of them. I'm like, oh my gosh, if you just tweaked it here and here, you could really just make a killing. So um, I'm excited for you uh, to see where this goes. But um, yeah, like I said, I'll follow up with you later too. I'll I'll do an email. Uh, so you, I give it step by step. Like, look, here's here's a link to do this, 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 and this. So it's a little bit more of a, an actionable items, and then I could probably share it with everybody later on Film Marketing Fridays. But um, that's about it. If you have any other questions, um, uh, let me see. Um, first time we talk, uh, we talk about email lists. Um, Self-distributing, and um, oh, I, I don't think I have questions anymore. There's something you want to ask me? Or? No, yeah, it's fantastic. I, what well, I'm really, I'm curious to see where it goes. Like, I'll follow up with you and say, were you able to apply anything from our session together? Like, were you able to make any headway with uh, converting your your Facebook group? Um, likes to actual customers, buying customers, and we're able to convert to any you know email conversions and stuff like that. I mean, I think that'd be helpful to know, like you know, three months down the line to see how that worked out, um, to allow yourself enough time to build the necessary stuff, and then also just um, I'll be curious to see how your your posts are in terms of like how you're designing your crafting your copywriting posts with the visuals either through a, a, a really interesting photo or just these small video clips like I said I think you have a lot already in your film that you just need to extract like the little snippets and give you gotta feed that free to your audience you know actually Gary Vanderchuk who's a this amazing like you know entrepreneur um, um, social media guru. Um, he has a great book called Jab, 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 Right Hook. Um, but his advice for anybody marketing a film, he just says, look, you know, nine months out, you know, a year out before you actually release your film, you should be using like animated GIFs on Tumblr. So it's like you can almost release the entire film through animated GIFs. So you're just giving snippets, even if it's like stuff that was on the cutting room floor. If you're just showing like animated GIFs and then you're adding interesting like uh, text to it in the context of what your film is about, you're just you just the consistency is important to feed the imagination or the interest of your targeted audience. Um, he was recommending it on Tumblr. I'm not too sure if your targeted audience even uses Tumblr, so I think Facebook would be a good start. Like I said, you can use animated GIFs, but I think you use video. I mean, 
video is blowing up I, on Facebook right now, and um, I just saw a stat recently that I think um, some people are having better engagement and uh, more views on Facebook video than they are on YouTube. Um, so something to think about by just uploading directly to the to the native platform of Facebook. But uh, the concept there is you're feeding them the snippets. You can almost do the entire film. You know, just like the gra grab the whole film. And like, what was the great the the first five minutes of your film? What's the key takeaways? Grab that short video clip and then add like text. You know, the summing up summing up what the idea is, and then maybe leaving an open end question. Anything to get people to click through and get more interest, and you just feed that, you know, periodically. Um, I, that's also a lot of work, but I don't know who actually edited the video or whatnot. But um, like I see you have enough stuff there that if you could just focus maybe on ten uh, items, promote a post, and see how that goes. At least that's that won't kill anybody. You know, it's like it's it's something you could do on the part time, where it's like, oh, tonight we're just going to focus on developing one, you know, post. And what, how that is going to uh, be written, how that's going to look, and then you, you know, the next day, next day. Before you know, in two weeks, you've got enough uh, material that you can promote over a course of like three months or something. So, something like that. Did you work with social media when when you released the cube? I'll tell you, I did everything wrong with the cube. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, the, 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 well, the the quick story was, um, I knew. I was making this film for like nothing for 500 bucks because I knew that gave me the license and the freedom to just make whatever dumb film that I wanted to make. I knew that I didn't have a strong genre. Like the genres were not strong enough. Like it's not like a horror film. It's not like a really hardcore suspense film. Um, it's, you know, if I had a really strong genre, like saying like this is a zombie film and it's going to, and it's a campy zombie film, you know, that's something you could you know, hold your head. Um, yeah, you know, hat on, but and also I didn't have any stars and like that, and I just made it. I didn't. Nobody even knew about it. So, Film Trooper was actually created to have a educational platform to document the trials and errors of marketing this film online. It, it, really, all it is is like, okay, the big thing for me for the Cube was like, could I make a feature film for five hundred dollars without a crew? I didn't even know if I didn't think I could do it. I know other people have done it, but I didn't know if I could do it. And since I was able to do it, it broke the seal for me creatively because now I start seeing things differently. And honestly, that's the niche of Film Trooper for me personally is I want to just focus on getting better at telling stories in one single location and making feature films that are like under $1,000. You know that that's like that's me. There's a, there's enough people out there that are much better experts that can teach you how to develop the hundred thousand to five million dollar range film that you're using partners and and equity fund and pre sales and then how to use crowdfunding to do all this type of stuff. For me personally, I'm on this mission to see like how how good I can get at telling stories in a very confined location and making them for very dirt cheap, and then. The sharing my trials and tribulations of selling it online, just putting it on Vimeo on demand and saying, like, you're right. Hey, I made a film. That wasn't a problem. Two, getting distribution wasn't a problem. I got a worldwide audience through Vimeo, but nobody knows about the film. So everything that I do is testing out all the marketing stuff of getting people to drive to the, uh, you know, to, to want to buy the film. And I so the same thing. I feel the same feeling. Make the film is not the difficult. It's not the hardest part of the, the job, you know. For me, marketing the film is the most tough thing. To do. Yeah, yeah. So the two there's two tiers that happened to the the cube. One, I decided to make a just to do a local premiere because you got to have one. Like if you can if you can have an if you do one, just find a theater, a local theater. They can get it, have a premiere. But instead of just inviting friends and family, one of the things the uh, online entrepreneurs uh, or entrepreneurs in general s recommend is like if you don't know anybody in town, because I was still fairly new to Portland, I didn't know a lot of people in the community, so it wasn't like this large network of people that I could reach out to. Uh, they say when you're new in town, they recommend you throw an event, a networking event, so you are just like a conduit of bringing other people together. Now I had an opportunity to work with a couple independent filmmakers in Portland that I, I really admired their work, so I created this you know ridiculous 
award show called the Film Trooper Suck Up Awards. So I was sucking up to them, you know, kissing their, you know, just kissing them, their asses, because they were doing much better stuff than I was. And I gave them this mug. I don't know if you can see behind me. There's a white mug, and that was the gift. Instead of a trophy, they got a mug that's, uh, that honored them. So I brought people together, and I showed their trailers or short films prior, and I gave them the award and just said the people that I admired and the work that they've done in the community. And I think it was helpful because a lot of people didn't know a lot of the other filmmakers in the community. So I was able to be a conduit and bring people together. And so the Cube... That was his theatrical premiere. It was a chance to be a, a dove end, a, a tail end to this networking event. And so it was important to me that people were in a good mood. So they, you know, it was fun. It was tongue in cheek. They got people being rewarded. And, you know, it's the strategy there was too. If, I, if I'm going to give an award to like a handful of filmmakers, my goal is that they brought at least one person to the theater, you know. <laughs> so I made a profit that night. Um, again, this film, 500 bucks. I made about you know, 200 bucks that night. Um, so I was all, I'm almost halfway there. So then I took, I made sure that I recorded um, the event afterwards to get people's reaction coming out of the movie, and I turned that into like these promotional videos that I could at least use on social media to, as a social proof. And then um, my unique selling proposition for the cube is simply, you know. What does a five hundred dollar film feature film with no crew look like? And um, so I knew that the target audience was other filmmakers, and so Film Trooper is all about that. So all this stuff is is designed to like you know eventually I'll make my money back, which I already have. You know you hope you're hoping that you make five hundred bucks back, but I can say that I made a feature film and I and I didn't lose money on it. You know so that to me says okay I've done it once. I've utilized online marketing and sales tactics to make sales online for a digital product. It wasn't huge, but you know what? It's better than b being broke and being in debt to like investors and stuff like that. And I thought to myself, like, well, okay, the next project, I have to be, supersize it. I got to do better. I've got to, I got to make a better, you know, dent in the market and get better at what I do. And so, Film Trooper is really just sort of a you people get to see the crash test dummy version me being out there putting myself out there exploring all these things and marketing film marketing is simply just something I'm really enthusiastic about and trying to be somebody who applies it to my own crap but then help other people with what they're doing and like I said a lot of people like yourself are in a much better position than I am with the cube because you have a product a topic that is a nation a whole nation can get behind you know, if it's targeted and it's talked about correctly in terms of like striking into that emotional cord, and you like said you have ninety thousand people already on Facebook. I mean, this is a huge win that you can convert. You know, um, probably better sales than I can because I said the cube is only moderately interest. It has moderate interest in terms of for filmmakers because filmmakers in general are cynical. So it's like, how do you? I got to break down those barriers of all those obstacles to make them go, and maybe it's worth checking out. So um, anyway, so that's the, the story about the cube and how it relates, but um, I could totally see, like, oh, my God, if I had, like, a, a zombie film, if I, and it, there's so many people that love the zombie films, you could piggyback The Walking Dead or, you know, whatever, all these, the, there's so many marketing angles they could take that could make much better um, impact than what I've been able to do. And so that's why I'm approaching this next film, um, as a straight, it's like a straight up scary film, like a straight, straight up scary movie, paranormal movie. That's it, and uh, and I'm banking on everything I learned to at least have a better targeted audience that I would love to be able to make a movie for. So, that's where I'm at with everything. Nice, nice, very nice. And hey, uh, you know, Sergio, thank you so much for letting me babble a lot. You know, I don't know, <laughs> you know, I, I'm I'm hoping to provide. A platform and some interest to, and value to other filmmakers that kind of like nod their head and go, okay, I get it. I know exactly where he's going or what they're talking about in general from both sides. Because I know there's a lot of people that are making documentaries and they probably want to know what you're, what you guys are going through. Like you said, it's, I'm sure some documentary filmmakers are like, oh my god, if I had 90,000 Facebook likes, like what would I do with that? You know, so it's like, so that's a great start and so, and definitely on a positive. So now we just got to convert that to sales and email lists and uh, and take it from there. Sure, I I appreciate. Uh, thank you, thank you for this, oppor this opportunity. And I apologize apologize for my English. 
I speak English like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's let's work, man. Let's market this this film and um, let's do email lists and promote posts, like you said. We need to to work on it. Thank yeah. you very much. No this. problem. Thank you so much. Well, I'm going to throw it here to the tail end. This is my version of paying the bills um, when I use this slide share. Oh, we've got to present it to everybody first. People are, oh, so here we go. So, yes, this is my version of paying the bills. <laughs> it's saying, like, hey, listen, if you're stuck trying to make your film, then you can get inspired and look at the equipment that I use to make the feature film, the cube, for only $500. I can't even look. You speak better English than I do. I can't even speak English. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? What equipment did I use to make a feature film for five hundred dollars with no crew? Just go to freegearguide.com. Again, that's freegearguide.com, and you can see everything I used, and you'd be part of the film trooper email list, and you got a lot, of, a lot of the good nuggets from there. So that's about it. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in to Film Trooper Presents Film Marketing Fridays. I will see you later.